Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest. And welcome to one of my favorite places on the Pacific coastline, and that is in Baja Sur in Mexico. I am here for just a few days, and as you know, I always like to be looking for some plant life where I go that may bring about color. And in this area, being quite arid, it has a lot of succulent and one of those that creates a beautiful natural color is aloe vera. So join me as I look at how aloe vera can bring about a gorgeous addition to my natural palette, all with a really fun shibori tie-dye method, and that is Kumo. Let's go find some aloe vera. travel, sometimes I don't bring a lot of things with me. Other times I do, including my dye pots. But on this trip, which was just a short few days, I decided to only pack some supplies that would allow me to bring back some of the magical color here from Baja. In my bag, I have only a pre mordanted piece of cotton as well as some different kinds of ribbon that is super easy to just stuff in a bag and forget about. So with the help of these two fiber sources today, I know I can easily do something here in this real desert environment, and that is a sun tea. The fibers themselves have been washed and mordanted with aluminum acetate for the cotton, and with alum for the silk ribbon, so everything's ready to go. In the garden where I'm staying, we have several aloe vera plants, so I'm going to simply sample a couple of fronds, cut them up, and put them into glass jars. We'll set them out in the sun, and see that color turn from that vibrant greenish yellow into that really beautiful red. And using just a simple glass jar, I'll be able to take these with me as I travel around the peninsula here and continue to allow them to sit for several days using the warmth of the sun and the conductive properties of glass. We should be able to welcome that color onto these different fibers. Now for the cotton piece, I'm going to fold it into a Kumo style tie-dye, which is a shibori technique. It's called the spider tie, or Kumo, and it creates a really wonderful design. By tying this off, I will allow myself to have three color options. I'll have the white where the tie is. I will have the pinkish color coming from the aloe vera, and aloe vera is page sensitive. So I'm going to try to shift the aloe vera using baking soda that I can find here just in the grocery store. If we use that on the tips and unbind all together, we hopefully will have three distinct colors on our shibori kumo tie-dye. So let's get started.
about that color shift? It only took a few hours in the sun for it to go from that yellowish green into that really deep, beautiful red. So now I can start to dye the ribbon, silk, cotton, and one silk nylon weave. I've had them soaking now for about an hour just to get them nice and saturated. You know, we always work with wet fiber in our natural dye studios. It allows for there to just be a better uptake of the dye because oxygen has been removed and the fibers have opened up. And we'll see what kind of different colors we get on those different fiber types. I will put those in the glass directly with the pieces of aloe vera and just stir them, shake them around for the next few days and check on them and see how that color starts to take up into those different ribbons. All right, so these ribbons have been sitting overnight. You can see they're starting to take on the color. It's subtle. It's taking on a very warm pink color. I will keep moving it around. You can see how the different kinds of fiber are taking the color slightly differently. So we'll just keep those in. I'm traveling for the next three days, so I'm hoping to keep soaking them for that long. Now, let's work on the shibori. So there are many different kinds of ways to tie fiber in the shibori family. And today we're only gonna look at one and that is Kumo. I recently taught a class that had Kumo as one of the shibori techniques and I loved the way it looked after. The design is absolutely stunning. What I like about it too is that this is gonna allow me to have different parts where I can dip into a baking soda mixture or an alkaline mixture in order to shift the color. So I'll have little tips on the Kumo tie that I can do that with after we've dyed it in the aloe vera. So let me show you how to tie it. I do not have a flat surface in order to work and I also don't have an iron. So the fiber I'm using is gonna be slightly wrinkled. At home, you can iron this and you can even iron at every fold, which can help just create crisper lines and a smoother surface to work from. But I'm gonna go au natural since I am traveling and out and about. So let's start tying up the fiber that I have. So for the particular project I'm working on, the size of fiber, I need seven rubber bands. I have a square napkin, you know these well, the cotton napkins that I use in lots of videos. This is a nice square size and I've already washed and pre-treated this with aluminum acetate. So I'm simply going to lay this out and there's already a nice crease here, so I'll probably actually flip that over and work from this side. And all I need to do to begin is create an accordion fold. I'm going to fold it in half like this. And then I'm going to fold one side back. And as I said, creasing it, but I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that it's not smooth. And then I need to fold the other side the opposite direction. So making that accordion style fold looks like this. Again, there is no perfection going on here. You can be really, really tight with this and try to make it super even. I'm not going to worry about that. Since I'm traveling, I got to go with the flow. So I now have this folded like so. Just to make creases, I'm going to fold it over to quarters. And this is only to make the creases here so that I have something that I can see as a guide for tying. Crease that down and crease that one down. So now if I fold it back out to that initial fold, I have three different lines here that I can see. And these are gonna be my guidelines for tying. 
I'm going to be tying three times on one side. I'm going to take this one. I'm simply going to take it, pull it up like so, and then tie it, leaving a tip at the top just like that. Very simple. Now I'm going to do the same thing at those other two marks. You can see my other fold line there. So I'm going to tie one here. Like that. And then I have one other one to tie from that crease mark, which will be here. There we go. So we have the three on one side. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to do it four ties because I'm going to start by tying off the corner piece here. Make sure I get all those. And then I'm going to tie the other corner piece. And then I have just the, the two center creased pieces, which is in between those two. So we'll tie one in between where those two were. So there are my other two pieces. So in between those on the opposite side. Like that so you can see what it looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to tie down another tie on each one of these. So I'm going to tie one here and I'm going to tie one here and so forth. I'll do that for all seven of my ties. I said I needed seven rubber bands. I actually need 14. <laughs> So I will do that for each one of the ties. Okay, I've done two on each of them. Now I'm gonna actually do a third one so that I have areas like this that are a little less tied to come together and have as many ties as it feels comfortable. You can do this or not, up to you. It really is a creative choice of your own. All right. And there you go. I tied it as many times as I felt like I wanted to, starting with those original seven ties. Some of them ended up with three, even four on these edges, and some just stayed at two. So go ahead and play around with this. It depends a lot on the shape of your cloth and also just what you're feeling on the day that you decide to bind. Okay, next step, we need to get this into water and soaking before we can put it into the aloe vera dye. So we traversed over the center of the peninsula from the west coast or the Pacific side of Baja Sur. And now we're in the central area of the mountains here. And we were lucky enough to spend some time at an incredible waterfall and stay on a ranch. We're gonna be heading back to the East Coast, the Sea of Cortez side before heading back home. A very short trip. So the Kumo dyed fiber, as well as the ribbons, have been soaking overnight. I combined them into one larger jar and they are taking on their color. I'll keep them in there for one more day and then we'll do some baking soda or alkaline dips to see if we can't change the color of the tips on the kumo as well as half of the ribbons. See what we get. So let's take a look at it before we head off to the Sea of Cortez. So here is the glass jar that I have put all of the pieces of aloe vera as well as the fiber. And it has been sitting in this jar now for about two days. It is definitely taking on that really beautiful, warm pink hue. And of course, silk is always gonna do better with natural color, or at least get a little bit deeper. And our Kumo is down in here too. Let's see how that 
is doing. Oh, look at that beautiful pink coming about. Ah, oh, looks beautiful. All right, let's close it back up, jump in the car, head to the Sea of Cortez, and go look for some baking soda. All right, day three. It's time for us to head to the airport. So I'm gonna be pulling out our fiber to see how it looks today. And then I wanna do a pH shift on them. Aloe vera is pH sensitive, which means that we can alter the color by introducing it either to an acid or a base. On the acid, we might use something like lemon juice, or vinegar, and on the base side or alkaline side, we're gonna be using baking soda today. Super easy to find. We'll convert my dye bath into an alkaline bath, and then we will partially dip these in and see if we can't find another color. It's a great way to expand your palette. I love to work with pH sensitive materials just for that reason. So let's take a look at what we got and mix up our alkaline bath. Now something I noticed was that the color changed quite a bit from that darker red into more of an orangey red. So let's see if we can bring it back on the other side with alkaline. Wow, those really shifted already on their own. I don't know if the heat also added to that, but definitely they moved from that warmer pink into almost like a peach color. So I'm not quite sure what the baking soda is gonna do, but let's see. All right, I've had this sitting for about 30 minutes and the shift is really slight. Probably won't even show up on camera. So I'm gonna just pull these out. It's very possible that I already had an alkaline situation in my dye bath to shift it. I don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out, rinse them let them dry and we'll see if we can see a difference. There wasn't much of a change at all, but they've been rinsed and now they're drying. So I'm just gonna dip the tips of that Kumo tied piece in, see if we get any change. And then we'll let it dry, unwrap them, and see what beauty Bahasur brought us in the way of aloe vera. All right, quick layover before heading home to the Pacific Northwest and thought it would be fun to just go ahead and open these up, see what we got. I can tell you by looking at them that there was very little pH shift. My best guess for this is because the dye had already done some shifting on its own and I only tried to shift it further in the alkaline. I know that aloe vera can go from a beautiful warm pink color to a more orange or peach color. I'm living somewhere in between the two. So, you know, that's the thing when you travel, you just have to kind of see what you can have access to. And you're always a little bit you know, more challenged by just being somewhere outside of your dye studio, but that also is what makes it fun, right? And what I love about sharing these adventures with you is that I am figuring things out right alongside you and hopefully giving you some encouragement to think about ways in which you might be able to work with natural color when you're on the road, because it absolutely is possible. So. Let's go ahead and show you what we got and we'll unbind the Kumo wrap as well.
So here are all the ribbons. I actually think the one that shows the most difference is this one. Might be impossible to see in the video itself. This side was a side before putting it in baking soda, and this is a side with. What I see is that this became more pink, actually, and this is just a darker rose color. The difference is slight. Again, I don't know if you can see it. This is a silk nylon combo. The other colors that are similar are all the cotton pieces, and these are all cotton ribbons. And if you were to start at this end, on this one, for example, this is with just the die, and then as I move down, it does get lighter. And this was with the baking soda. So next to each other, you might see maybe a slight difference, but really nothing dramatic at all. And on these other two cotton pieces, you really can't see any shift at all, really. Well, maybe on this one again, maybe you can see a line there, I don't know just becomes a lighter pink. This is a little darker. The silk pieces, of course, are always gonna be a little different, and I cannot see any shift. They came out much more orange, even kind of moving into a brownish realm. So, suffice to say, I don't think we're gonna be experiencing the pH shift with any of these, to the extent that I know aloe vera is possible. So, let's open up our Kumo, see what we got there. We did get some nice patterns here, I have to say. I'm pretty happy with that. Just stretch it out the best that we can here. Really looks very pretty, very soft. And it just produces such lovely soft pink and peach hues, if you can shift it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope that I have inspired you to think about how you might be able to work with natural color while you're traveling. It is possible, and it also allows you to connect in with the environment that you're in. So the next time you travel, think about where you're going and what plants there are local and might be able to share some color with you. Very much look forward to seeing you again here, whether we're in the dye studio or out and about enjoying the beauty of Mother Nature. We are gonna have so much fun together with building our natural color palette. Take care. We can dip into baking soda or baking powder. Baking soda. I said baking powder before. I'll deal with that later. Um,